Hello everyone and welcome to this Let's Talk Forensic Psychology Today episode where we are talking about mental health and the reason we are talking about mental health is because this week is Mental Health Awareness Week. So between the 9th and the 15th of May of this year, Mental Health Foundation started, well it started the event 21 years ago and here we are today raising awareness and talking about mental health. And the theme this year for the Awareness Week is loneliness. So we wanted to just spend some time talking about the topic and absolutely wanting you all to talk with us um, and get in touch via our social media and on our comments box. And we're all here together. So we just wanted to say that at the offset. When I was thinking about the theme, I was thinking how because there's so much more opportunity for people to sort of reach out to other people that you think there would be less sort of capacity for loneliness, but that seems to somehow make it worse for people. And I think a lot of them, um, for instance, social media posts and things make it look like everybody's having a wonderful life, and maybe we're not if we're sitting at home on our own. And maybe that makes it more difficult for someone just to randomly reach out and say to someone, oh, actually, you know, defensive meeting up or going for a walk or doing something together because um they probably wouldn't want to say i'm a bit feeling a bit lonely but you know just reaching out and asking i think some i think that seems to make a big difference a lot of people say how you know people's social media posts make it look like everybody's having a great time apart from you and so that can make you i imagine make you feel really lonely I, i was talking to a friend today actually and she was talking about how she just decided to come off social media because she just felt that she was constantly comparing her life which she mm. was reasonably happy with um mm. to everyone else and it made me think about um it made me think just widely about the mental health aspect of social media but also those who who may be experiencing loneliness and mm. on one hand connecting to people on you know social platforms might be helpful but actually it can also be counterproductive as well can't it because it can like you just said make us you know think that we aren't enough yeah no it's difficult and I guess it's if you're if you've got you're having some sort of mental health problem for instance that depression or anxiety I guess that mood also make it much harder to reach out and ask and um sometimes I've reached out and said to someone oh do you fancy doing something and they'll say oh no I can't I'm busy and then you suddenly feel oh okay well and then you don't want to reach out to somebody else <laughs> <laughs> and then so that could be I can see would be difficult because I'm sure there's times we've all felt lonely and yeah. you, know, you sort of you can reach out to people and then if they say no and then you think oh okay well I'll give up then rather than think oh actually it's perfectly reasonable they probably are doing something and just asking somebody else you know I could see it could be really difficult to do that and feel that sort of damp you know they would possibly feeling rejected. Behind our heads here there's a hashtag that says I've been there so I guess that's also the, the aim of the week is to raise awareness that actually whilst we're not all maybe talking about it because I guess there's maybe some people might feel an element of shame or embarrassment about feeling or being able to express loneliness but the reality and sad reality is that we're all human beings and we've all experienced loneliness at some point um and also like with the pandemic I guess people who lived on their own that's a prime time for feeling deeply lonely when you're forced to not make any human connection for you know safety and health so it's a really I think it's a really a timely um awareness week for especially for loneliness and i suppose when we think of some of the other sort of common mental health problems um they you know they are much more common i think than we realize and as you said sometimes the sort of fear of talking out about it and the shame we might feel about doing that would make it difficult for us to talk out yeah. but i think what's really healthy now is that so many people do talk out yeah. about it you know and when people high profile people yeah. speak about the difficulties they've had i think that really helps other people to think it's okay to do that i think in the past five six years as i've grown up definitely like people are so much more it feels much more acceptable to say that it's, i'm not okay that mm -hmm. you know i think about that phrase it's okay to not be okay yeah. and, and that has come you know that's i don't remember life like that when i was at school definitely not mm -hmm. anyway and even having family that had mental health problems i would feel like i couldn't talk to anyone about that either so the fact that now it feels like we, we're like this week we're having this week uh, and you know people do talk about it more I think it's really positive it's not gonna doesn't make it go away obviously but I think the fact that we can all have an open and honest conversation about it makes it really positive in some way yeah definitely but they say now about one in six people will have um will experience some mental health problems 
Um, sort of one in five women and about one in eight men. Um, but interestingly, the um, rates of suicide for men tend to be higher. So it's interesting maybe that men aren't talking about it as much, yeah. which would be probably our experience of it. That's a really sad statistic, isn't it? It's, it's mm. very high. Like one in one in five, one in six. That's that's. Mm. You think about if you go out on a Saturday with your friends and there's five of you. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. that, you put it. That puts it into some context, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think when I when when I thought about mental health awareness week, I thought about my own mental health, and I thought about um the experience of being a trainee. Uh, and I, and I feel like I couldn't do this video without shouting out to all the um all trainee psychologists out there but specifically the forensic psychologist kind um mm. and how difficult um how difficult it is and how I think that my mental health has suffered as a result of um being trying to become qualified um and yeah it's really tough and I think trying to trying to uh become qualified whilst managing a job which is equally as quite distressing and hard to manage it, it's really difficult and it's really important that you or I have found it's really important like I keep in touch with my support network and talk about it where I can um but that's not to say that it makes it go away so mm -hmm. I just wanted to shout out to everyone out there that's going through it too yeah it's really true and I think it's important to look after yourself and take time out to relax and you know do things that were good for you go out for walks and meet your friends and chat and you know decompress from it all really because otherwise it can just be that that pressure to keep working and keep getting your qualifications done and when you're qualified still then you know that sort of um trying to push forward is really important to relax and rest isn't it yeah I think I, I definitely think I got into a, a space whereby I was defining myself constantly by how good I was doing at my work uh, mm -hmm. and and the route that I was on I wasn't ever getting constant feedback about how good I was doing so the, the judgment I was making was in my own head so it's this sort mm. of like circular thing where I was my own worst assessor and mm. I just didn't nothing was ever good enough um yeah so this is really yeah. difficult. like you said you have to do the thing self-care is the of the utmost importance yeah, and I think recognising we can only all be good enough. I think it's often in psychologists we all strive for perfection. And I think realising we can only be good enough is a big, it's like a big step for us to recognise that, but actually takes a massive load off our shoulders to yeah. realise. And actually having, if you were able to be perfect, which I think it's possible to be, um, but if you could provide that to somebody, then that's what they're going to expect out of everybody. And not everybody would, nobody would be able to be that. So in a way, it's sort of setting someone up for, false expectations so that's my excuse for just being good enough <laughs> you heard it here first <laughs> professor Geraldine Ackerman says <laughs> I'm gonna write that in a diary <laughs> But when you sort of think about the populations we work with, um, it tends to be that women tend to go into hospital more and men tend to go to prison or be sleeping rough or, um, you know, not seeking out the help. I think it's more socially acceptable for women to seek out help if they're struggling than it is for men, really, still, even though times have changed. Um, I mean, men are more likely to be sort of compulsorily detained or sectioned more than women, but... Um, women can I think go forward more and ask for help than more than men can how do you think that as a society we could ever make that I mean we've come leaps and bounds there's no yeah. doubt about it but how do you think we can make that better like get mm. even better at it I just don't I I don't know yeah, I mean, I think the people, the high profile people, footballers and other athletes speaking out and public figures speaking out about it. And, you know, it does really help, definitely, um, because people feel that if they can acknowledge it, so can we. Um, and recognising that it's so common and we can all at times, you know, we're all going to have stresses in our lives and we're going to cope less better than others. And like you say, if you've got the stress of going through your qualification and then, something happens in your private life as well and then your job you know it's, chances are we're not all going to be at our best and so recognizing that and giving yourself a break really I think is the important thing of just saying okay I can't work at my best for now and I'm going to take my foot off the pedal in one of the areas because that's all you can do rather than keep driving yourself to being exhausted by everything that's going on yeah because then you don't you can't you can't give yourself to uh you're not good at any of those areas in your no. life then, are you because you're no, just exactly. running empty 
Yeah, and then um, that whole thing about putting your own oxygen mask on first. If you don't do that, you're not going to be able to help anybody that you're trying to work with yeah. um, or, or your qualification, whatever the other aspects of your life are, then you're going to be spread too thin, aren't you? Yeah. So in my experience of prison and in my new environment, as a forensic psychologist, I support people with mental health problems through the form of psychological therapy or talking. Um, and then there's another role and the psychiatrist would be the one who would treat the mental health issue. Is that- Do you mean treat with medication? Yeah, treat with medication, yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. And then and then the, psycholog- the, psych- the forensic psychologist would come along and work alongside. Is that is that your experience too, or always? Yeah, I think it's really interesting with them um, working in different um, settings, like for instance, in a hospital setting or an in-reach team, um, that the medical model tends to come into the play where the, the thought of using medication is much more um, usual. That's, that's the sort of usual go-to. Um, whereas in the prison setting, generally, that isn't necessarily your first um, port of call. Um, so I suppose it's getting more familiar with the medication that's available. And I think, you know, we definitely see that does help and if you can sort of calm some of the the symptoms with using medication then they're much more able to access the psychological therapy so I can definitely see a a way of both working together that's really important. One of the things I think that's come to the fore more recently is about um, people you know parents who have mental health problems you know sort of how that might impact on their children Um, and people are looking much more now to the sort of while a female's pregnant and in the early years to sort of support her because knowing that that in turn will pay off dividends later on and because we've both worked with people who've had their parents and their mother in particular those early years have struggled with their mental health and so they've not been accessible as a parent really mm-hmm. and so if that extra support's given at that time you're literally helping two people rather than one or however many siblings there are mm-hmm. so that that's a really good investment in those very early years. One of the other things I I thought about with um, Awareness Week was I had a friend recently who said that she had taken some, she was off sick. And when I asked her, I was like, oh, goodness, what can I I bring you anything? What's up? She said, it's my mental health. And she was like, I don't know why we always assume that when someone goes sick, it's because of their physical problem. Mm. And I mean, I know I, 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 it's just an area that I hadn't expanded my thinking into actually it's okay to call in if you if you if you are suffering with anxiety or depression it's okay to that's the reason that you can't go to work it doesn't have to be that you have covid or mm-hmm. that you have a sickness bug actually sometimes our minds need a rest too yeah totally during covid as well particularly we know that the nhs staff have worked you know and prison staff and lots of other um you know uh, work yeah. Yeah, the key workers have, you know, worked relentlessly, haven't they, to try and keep the world going during a time of anxiety. And um, we've, you know, we've worked a lot with people where they've really struggled to manage their mental health. Well, you know, and we've talked about it before, how, you know, we were really anxious during the pandemic because it was totally unknown to us. But we were having to carry on as if we knew what we were doing and we could manage all of that weren't we I mean I think we've said before psychologists were looked to a lot to to know the answers when we didn't know any more than anybody else we'll just have that expectation that we would know those things um so I think at those times it was um there was times when it would be be very difficult for us to sort of hold it together and I think you know the times I've talked to you or you know talked to my colleagues as a way of coping with that I think was just we don't know how you'd ever manage without me and I if you weren't there to talk to, I don't know who I'd, who you'd go, how you'd manage it, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I guess comes back to that point of loneliness, doesn't it? Comes back mm. to the theme. Yeah, just having someone you can reach out to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of the things they sort of suggest in terms of... Um, helping our mental health is things like getting plenty of sleep which isn't always easy um you know because you think that would be quite easy just go to bed and sleep I think a lot of people when they're um, under stress find it difficult to sleep Mm -hmm. and then that becomes a sort of self-perpetuating thing as well um so sort of being able to switch off and go to sleep is not as simple as it seems um and that's probably something an episode we could do because there's so many people (laughs) going to be with sleep problems Um, but then things like mindfulness and just relaxing and resting and you know practicing just concentrating on our breathing for instance can really soothe our sort of everything that's under threat and everything that's on the go and trying to soothe what we need soothing so that we can switch off and go to sleep 
But I think it sort of workplaces are much more understanding now, as you said about your um, friend having time off for being unwell sort of mentally. I think it's they, people are a bit more understanding now. Yeah. Um, and I guess the more people can put interventions in at work to um, support people, the less likely they feel, feel the need to do that, to yeah. go off sick. And it's having a culture within work that's okay to talk about these things as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because some places that there would be such a sort of a cutthroat culture that you wouldn't be able to do that at all. There'd be no space for it, as it were. Yeah. Promoting well-being at work is so important. So yeah. any organisations that are watching, get promoting. Yeah, it is it's really important to have, you know, acknowledging what, you know, people are doing well and recognising the work and, um, yeah, having, we, I went into work the other day in one of the prisons I work in and there were people, um, staff and governors giving out like um, baguettes and coffee and Cadbury's cream eggs and <laughs> all these things and as you went in the gate in the morning, which is really nice. You just think, oh, it's nice just to be... Um, acknowledged really for the work you do and just sort of appreciate it feel appreciated yeah. um, when you first come into work on a morning you think oh actually it's quite nice people do appreciate what I'm doing yeah. um, and little things can make a big difference really yeah and if a day starts with a cream egg before midday it's going to be a good day exactly yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that can't be a bad day can it <laughs> <I think never. laughs> But even um, uh, some of the times in prison, we used to want, have once a year a sort of staff wellbeing day, and they had um, a person in giving like seated massages and people doing lots of different asp you know things during the day. And it was just again nice to have half an hour walk around, talk to people that would offer you different, um, you know, uh, different massages or different aspects of trying to sort of help your physical and mental health. Mm -hmm. It is nice to do that really. And again, it promotes people talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think having either anxiety or depression is so common now that people, you know, feel, and, and sometimes it's that people sort of might overuse the term um, because, and, and I guess there's going to be times we've all gone through anxiety, for instance, when we're doing exams or with particular things happening, but that's sort of more along the scale of people constantly living with anxiety and depression. Um, it must be so debilitating, but it's finding ways to cope as best you can. And talking about it is the first step. Acknowledging that we have it is really important. Yeah, making adjustments to things, because as you said, changing from one job to another can be really exhausting. The amount of work you have to learn so much different, you learn a different language almost by going to a different setting. And so, you know, recognising actually this is going to take its toll and not overloading yourself then when you come home from work and recognising actually I'm going to be tired and um, I am going to take a bit of time now to, to and not expect to know all of it when you've just changed. because. <laughs> These sort of things are it's a lot of pressure isn't it especially yeah. if you're going to a new job and you think everybody expects so much of you yeah, yeah recognize yeah. that it's going to take time to understand different you know, different aspects of your work really yeah going to university must be another time where you must feel so overwhelmed by learning so much and leaving home and um trying to sort of support yourself all those sorts of things must make it really difficult yeah yeah and recognizing at the end of the day we're all human beings we can't all be perfect yeah definitely especially at different times in our lives when there's hormones involved as well sort of during adolescence and um yeah those sorts of times are gonna you can sort of feel like oh it's just overwhelming mm. um, for people but recognizing that you know people can help but it's not doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be for the rest of your life it could be that it could be a short time that you feel like that and then it can be once it sort of leavens out a bit again you feel better yeah and we shouldn't ever um, lessen people's experiences. So um, uh, women that are going through the menopause, there's lots of mental health issues that are associated with that. And that's not to say that, that we disregard them then because they are a hormone issue. Yeah, totally, um, yeah. It's valid for what it is and we should support and acknowledge and let people talk about it. Totally, and that's again another area that's spoken about so little and yet affects 50% of the population. <laughs> um, yeah, and for quite a period of time. I mean, I think people feel sometimes, oh, that's probably for a few months, but I mean, people can be before the menopause and during it can be sort of five, 10 years. So it's a you know, big part of their work in life yeah. and something that's just not spoken about. 
um, that excellent episode recently where we were talking to Jackie Bates Gaston about that and her research into that many years ago, actually. She was way ahead of her time researching that. Um, but also just, you know, people just still don't talk about it now. And your own research has found the same, hasn't it? That people yeah. don't talk about these things. Um, and yet if it was something that affected, you know, all men, you would wonder whether they would feel able to talk about it. Absolutely. Well, as we do draw this episode to a close, it just leaves us to say that take care of yourselves and know that you have support in the Let's Talk Forensic Psychology family. So do get in touch via social media. We have emails. You can comment on the YouTube um, comments under each chat, under each episode. Um, we're here. I've been there. Yeah. Hashtag I've been there. Yeah, for getting in touch with us on the... Um, LinkedIn or or Twitter, give us and Instagram, you know, give us your comments and tell us how you're thinking and anything you think we can do to raise awareness. Um, we'll be happy to do that. And most importantly, look after yourselves because we're all human beings that need caring for, self-care and from other people. So look after yourselves. And then all that gives us left to say is let's talk forensic psychology. Thank you.